Okay, hey, good afternoon, good morning. How are y'all doing? Uh, my name is Pete Lynch. Um, I'm part of the STEM program, I guess, for my career. I, uh, I graduated from the United States Naval Academy in 1986, so I'm an old guy. Um, but I did 30 years of active duty service, um, serving the country as a civil engineer corps officer, which is a combination of CB work, construction battalions, um, you know, contingency work across the world. Uh, and as a, um, as a civil engineer corps officer, you also run bases, essentially every Navy base is like a city. Um, we have a port, we have infrastructure, we have housing, we have utilities and transportation assets, all kinds of things that you do as any other city, um, a little smaller maybe, but, uh, but still a lot of interesting things that you do, construction, maintenance, um, new facilities and renovating old facilities. You get to work with uh, state historic preservation offices and things like that on uh, historic uh, facilities. A lot of Navy stuff is really old. Uh, and so you've got to work with those kinds of things. So 30 years of that, um, got a chance to live in Japan. I lived in Germany, deployed to places like Spain, um, Somalia, uh, throughout the Balkans, uh, Bosnia, uh, Albania, places like that. Uh, a lot of work in Africa, doing interesting things for infrastructure there, schools, hospitals, and things. Um, so that was a really neat part of my life. My, my career in, those, in the Civil Engineer Corps um, had command of a big unit in uh, Guam, which is a little U.S. trust territory in the middle of the Pacific. I uh, got to work in Hawaii and Pennsylvania, a lot of neat places on the active duty side. Um, when I retired from the active duty side, I started to work for Department of Energy, and I worked uh, project management for mega construction projects. These are projects that are over $100 million. Uh, several of them were in the tens of billions of dollars uh, to clean up uh, things from the Cold War, uh, nuclear facilities that had to be cleaned up uh, to make sure that they don't um, you know, get into the environment in a bad way. And uh, there's a lot of materials that are out there that still have to be contained. And uh, ultimately, we're going to call it vitrification, where you take nuclear products and you mix it with hot sand and it becomes glass and then it becomes very stable um, then you put it into some sort of fancy uh, lead line facility and then store it forever right so it goes into some sort of place that it can't get uh, used by others to do bad things so um, pretty complicated very exciting but very large sophisticated sophisticated construction projects and uh, doing a lot of that stuff with uh, risk management, uh, contingency engineering that uh, plays into you know, large commercial construction. I uh, did that for a few years and then I worked back for the Navy. So now I'm a civilian um, working for the Navy. Current position is the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Safety, quite a mouthful. Usually we just call that a DASN, uh, but it's kind of a high level, um, thing where you're looking for safety worldwide. So it's aviation safety, operational safety, uh, the naval uh, forces includes the Marine Corps and the Navy. So everything having to do with ground combat, everything having to do with aviation for Ospreys or F-18s or whatever, uh, we're involved. So if it's on a nuclear aircraft carrier uh, and something happens, there's an accident or somebody gets hurt, you know, our, our teams go out and look at that kind of stuff. So um, that's a whole different kinds of world for me. I hadn't worked that very closely, um, but it's a new world for me. I've been doing that job since October and I really enjoy it. And um, it's nice because it's sort of right at the level of you have political appointees that are working at the secretariat level. And then you have career uh, diplomats, or not diplomats, um, uh, bureaucrats essentially that are engineers and things that are working at the high level that have grown up in the, in the military services, uh, and now they're working for the political appointees that have a whole different perspective, a lot of different experiences and things. And it's really neat to see that interaction between um, people that have worked on the outside for their whole career, and now people that have worked within the Navy their whole career, and how that uh, learns from each other, what we uh, do to enhance different things. So um, I've really enjoyed my career. I've had uh, great experience. I uh, got my master's degree at uh, Penn State, another uh, Big Ten school. Uh, did an executive program at uh, Michigan, so um, definitely interested in the uh, BCS final uh, in, coming up soon and uh, see how that works out. And um, I have my professional registration uh, as an engineer in Pennsylvania. So um, continuing education, I think, is a big issue associated with uh, the STEM program. 
you know, once you graduate from college, you get a degree, but then you have to do something with that, right? You have to apply it to some sort of science or technology, uh, engineering or math, whatever. Um, almost all of those careers continued education are very fundamental to that. So as a PE, a professional engineer, uh, you have to continue to maintain that uh, accreditation and things and those licenses. So that again, takes, uh, creates a very exciting part of your, uh, of your career life. So uh, anyway, I've had a, a great time with it. It's a great run. Um, I certainly have some more to offer and uh, looking forward to continue to contribute to the nation, the nation and the Naval Forces. So um, thanks for the chance to talk to y'all.